Hey guys, it's Graham. What's cracking? This is my review of Graveyard of Demons by Larry Correa. Although this is going to be a spoiler-free review, I've got a lot to say about just how satisfied I am after reading it and how excited I am for the next one. So, what to say without giving anything away? Well, we are five books deep into this series, and originally this was going to be the final book, but then it got split for length, and I've got to say, after li listening to uh, Writer Dojo so much for the last couple of years and the little tidbits that Larry has posted about the writing process for this, I'm very glad that it's getting split because this one flowed very well. And uh, with the focus that it had on every individual character and their arcs and the progression that they contributed to the overall story, uh, I just I try to imagine what this book would have been like if we'd gotten like the the basic gist of it, but with half as much elaboration. Like say if you were going to take this book and then the sixth book, which is roughly going to be of equal length, and give us all the content that's in that, but with half as many words. Like basically you're you're skimming over what all you're trying to say. To, to get all that across and you, you miss out on some of the little niche things here and there that, that really give depth and body and color to uh, the relationships and the revelations and all of the things that I've come to appreciate from this series. It's almost impossible for me to analyze this particular fantasy series without comparing it to the really, I'm, I'm going to say bloated epic fantasy series that are out there. Series that could trim themselves down to this level, but instead, you know, Larry will write a book that's four or 500 pages where another author would write eight, 900, 1,000 pages. And it, it doesn't have to be that way. Like, you can write it at the pace of a thriller and still give us a very deep and, and uh, satisfying world and story. But, I mean, I, I, I guess in... In some sense, that's just a, a different genre unto itself. I remember thinking about, I was reading a news article in a, in a car magazine years ago after Bugatti brought back the Veyron, which at the time was the most expensive production supercar ever. It was like $1.4 million for the, uh, the first Bugatti Veyron around 20 years ago. And guys who were in my tax bracket would look at that and just think that's freaking ridiculous. Like, who's going to do that? Who's going to buy one of those? Would you even want to drive it on the ground with other motorists? But as it turns out, there was a market for it. And the guys that are putting their money into fine art, because fine art retains its value, were then turning around and buying cars like the Bugatti Veyron because it would also retain its value. And uh, not to say that... Uh, this series is like the literary version of the Bugatti Veyron, but other car companies who started creating cars in that price range said that they were grateful that Bugatti opened up that market because there were people who had that kind of money who would spend it on that kind of car. And I'm thinking this is the same phenomenon happening with this type of fantasy novel that has the, the scope and the tightness and the pacing and the focus of a thriller novel, but still gives us a very rich and detailed and developed world. It just doesn't like stop you every two pages and give you three pages of uh, lore dumps and background details. It's like it, it gives you what you need for the story and the characters to keep moving. And it, it makes it eminently rereadable. Not in the sense that you've got to go over it with a magnifying glass to get the details of what's going on, but so that it's it's more satisfying and it, it anchors itself more in your imagination with every reading of it. Like you, you get all the details that you need on the fly. Like it, it's just I love that about this series. I love the characters, I love the the moments of triumph that so many of them had. And oh he just does such a great job of taking all of these books and stacking them on top of each other. And you can look at them and say, I know this is all part of one story, but you can also say like, okay, with this book, I know what the, 
a singular goal is. I know which character is going to get most of the time and attention. Um, I, I could tell you what the major arc is for each book. Uh, they explore some new facet or some new place, some new component of the, of the setting that also introduces us to some new complication with the overall plot, with the return of these, these ancient and forgotten gods. Um, I'm still excited to learn ultimately what the, the will and role of these gods is. And uh, there's, it's not like there's a mountain of stuff to explain in the final book because he's been explaining and revealing things along the way, but we're going to get our concluding explanation in the final book in a couple of months. And I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, Bain Books, the publisher, they do these things called e-arcs, um, electronic advanced reader copies, where you can buy a book way ahead of time for 15 bucks. And it, it might be, not that it's incomplete, but it might not be the final version. Like there might be some typos and minor errors here and there. But you can pay for a book ahead of time while the publisher is, is finalizing it. And I guess they have enough authors and enough ongoing series and enough interested readers that they do this. And I've, I've seen this pop up for years. Larry always advertises when his e-arcs go live. This might be the first time that I've ever thought to myself, you know, I'm willing to part with 15 bucks to read a rough version of this book because I'm going to turn around and spend 25 bucks to own it in hardcover in a couple of months anyway. <laughs> Um, but I can do that because, you know, hey, you guys have been viewing my channel and uh, I'm actually getting a couple of YouTube dollars every month. It's, it's coming together and I'm very pleased about that. Uh, so I, I can spend some YouTube money on books that I'm going to turn around and make more YouTube videos out of. It just, it's a vicious cycle. It's going to feed itself and I'm, I'm delighted to be a part of it. The one thing that I'm going to not spoil but give away from this book is uh, there's a cliffhanger at the end of book four, Tower of Silence, where the demons in this setting, they do something that alters the world. And after having read that book twice, I got the impression that they had broken the world itself. And now all of the inland fresh water, even the stuff away from the coast and from the oceans and the seas, suddenly was converted to salt water. I thought, holy crap, if they did that everywhere, then uh, you're talking about massive famine, massive death, and a lot of the next book is going to have to focus on the logistics of people desalinating and purifying their water. Crops were going to die, livestock would die, people would die. I thought, oh, this is going to introduce a, a new, tense complication to the story. No, the, the way the story plays out, it wasn't that all fresh land or fresh water that was inland everywhere suddenly became salt water. It's that the demons have a subterranean network of tunnels that burrow inland from the ocean and, and crisscross all over the entire continent. And the spell was really a, an alert that went out to all the demons at the end of the fourth book saying, start digging your way into inland water sources. Uh, and they started polluting inland water with salt water. So it wasn't that all the inland water suddenly became salt water. It's that the demons started coming up to the surface far inland, whereas before they would have to attack the coastal cities or um, swim upstream to the, uh, the rivers that flowed into the sea. Um, this is still a... a deadly situation to those who are inland, but it wasn't like all the water everywhere suddenly became salt water because, uh, yeah, that would probably kill off the entire population of the world and end the series rather abruptly and unsatisfactorily. And uh, Larry gives like very satisfying endings to his books. So, man, I'm just, I'm really pleased with this. It's probably the best fantasy series that I'm reading right now, The Saga of the Forgotten Warrior. And after seeing where and how this one ended and how it was kind of the midway point of the script that he was working on up until a couple of months ago, uh, I'm glad that he decided to not limit himself with a fifth book, but instead expand it to a sixth book because there, there's definitely enough to wrap up that he could write another book of this length and get us there. So a hearty endorsement. I'm, 
I think that I gave Tower of Silence five stars. I know I definitely gave Son of the Black Sword five stars. I think two and three got uh, four stars from me, but I gave this one an enthusiastic five. And yeah, in a week or two, if I'm if I'm still this hyped on it, I'll probably pay for that E arc, and I'll be able to read Heart of the Mountain ahead of time. Um, if memory serves, Heart of the Mountain comes out in hardcover and ebook in March. And the audiobooks for, for this one and the sixth one are both coming out because they're getting recorded back to back in May. Tim Gerard Reynolds is in high demand, so it makes sense to just say, okay, well, we'll do this and we'll get them out back to back. I know that I will be rereading them then. And uh, I'll probably do summary videos for, well, let me know. Like, should I do a summary video for the fifth but not the sixth? And because, hey, you know, at that point, people should just read the sixth book, like, not spoil the ending. Or should I, should I do one of those uh, super summary videos like I've done for Tim Rare and stuff? If I do one of those, I'll probably wait until book six has been out for like a year because I don't I don't want to sweep the leg on uh, on the fandom or anything and say like, hey, here's spoilers for all of that. Um, but I'm, I'm just really loving this series and uh, I, I like talking to you guys about it here. So let me know what you think. But definitely if you're... If you're on the fence about reading this series, now is the time to do it because you got time to read five books before the sixth and final one comes out in a couple of months. Hey, thank you for watching that. Did you know that I'm also an author? You can check the description for a link to my book, Mr. Friday. It's set in a future where Black Friday is militarized and televised and the best Friday fighters end up getting sponsors and backing, but it just so happens that the very best of them actually wants to take the holiday down. When he's approached by a couple of other like-minded fighters, he jumps at the chance, and it goes haywire from there. This is a short novella, and it's available in ebook format for just 99 cents. Drive safe. See you out there.